Our objective is to help Indian football. We were so, you know, he's a lion. You know, it's, it's a football culture, it's, it's a job, it's not a hobby. They were just been talking and BFC has just been doing it. I wasn't even told to finish in the top half. Talk to any player and they'll tell you what the fans have done to this club. First game of the season, fans have to break through the gate. We've always come out here, 6,000, 7,000 fans. Growing berserk, I never thought we could achieve this in the first year. If you watch, it's probably the hardest working team in the league by far. And our vision was to be the best run club in the country. They've made it a very professional setup. It's a, it's a matter of life for them. This club is be a great example of how things should be run in this country. Bangalore, a city of dreams, hopes and aspirations. Known for its flourishing IT sector and fantastic climate, India's Garden City is one of the fast developing cities in the world. Bangalore the place that had been home to me for the last four years. I had spent the best part of my college life in Bangalore and needless to say, I had fallen in love with the city. The hustle and bustle of MG and Brigade Road, the annoying auto wallas, the traffic, the much debated nightlife, even the smell of Bangalore was different. And football. Football isn't a game of life and death, it's much more than that. An ideology I believe in. With cricket being one of the few sports that India could compete in at a global level, it was somewhat understandable that cricket was the most dominant sport in the country. But Bangalore had an unusually high number of youth interested in football. It wouldn't be surprising to see the streets of Bangalore crowded with children playing the beautiful game on a sunny Monday evening. There were holdings of Neymar and Messi and even a statue of Pele, the only statue of the legend in all of Asia. In that respect, it was somewhat surprising that Bangalore had not seen a top-tier I-League football team it truly deserved for so long. The I-League was one that lacked professionalism and with no football club representing Bangalore on a national scale, the football-starved fans of the city had taken to watching Europe's elite leagues. In the light of all of this, there were widespread rumours during early May 2013 of a new football club being formed in the city of Bangalore. And surely enough, the rumours became reality. By end July 2013, there was a formal announcement that a new football club had been inducted in India's top tier league. Bengaluru Football Club. Bengaluru Football Club came with the promise of professionalism and quality. Jindal Steelworks, the steel company that had invested in this football club, promised European style infrastructure and training practices. Considering Bangalore is my home city and I love football, I grasped at the opportunity to speak to Parth Jindal, the CEO of Bengaluru Football Club, about this recent development. 
So, you know, um, football is the world's most popular sport and India is the second most populated country in the world. And if you look at how India fares in football, it's, uh, you know, we, we're nowhere even close to being uh, in the top five, forget the world, we're not even in Asia. So, and a lot of corporates um, across the country have poured in a lot of money into cricket. And, you know, when I, when I was coming back from college, I, I did my undergrad at, uh, in the States. Uh, you know, my dad was like, you know, Parth, uh, why don't we do something for football? Why don't we do our little bit in helping the game in India? So, and you know, he, we, were, we were mulling different options on how we could help the game. One is obviously, uh, you know, try and do something with the federation. One was obviously to own your own club. And if you look globally, um, the best way to influence football in a country is through the clubs. Um, a lot of the clubs in England, in Spain, they are the ones who produce these big players in Brazil. So we thought that that would be a great avenue for us to enter into. And luckily for us, I-League was also expanding. They were looking for corporates to enter. They were also looking to improve uh, football in the country. So, you know, things just aligned and uh, we, we managed to pick up a team and uh, managed to create uh, Bengaluru FC. The people of the city were a bit apprehensive, perhaps tentative, on giving this new club their all. Understandable so, considering the many doomed clubs that had come and gone. Whatever said and done, BFC had provided the football crazy people of the city the opportunity to go to a stadium and yell their throats out for a hometown club they can truly relate to. Would Bengaluru FC stick to their promise of changing the face of Indian football forever? Only time would tell. I think for every fan, you know, in every city all around the world, they'd like to have one hometown club and, you know, it's a great feeling for us to have a hometown club like Bengaluru and, you know, uh, we've been craving for a very, very long time. We've had clubs in the past like HL who've come and who've gone and uh, the feeling of supporting a team like Bengaluru is completely different from that. Come September 2013 and Bengaluru Football Club had got off to a sensational start in their debut season. Starting off with a 1-1 draw versus Mohan Bagan, BFC registered four wins on the trot, beating the likes of Sporting Goa and Dempo. John Johnson, BFC's lanky central defender, had quickly become a fan favourite after scoring from three corners in three consecutive games. Let's go, Johnson! Let's go! For a club just two months into its formation, BFC couldn't have asked for a better start to the season. Things were looking good on the field, but much had to be done off-field as well. The first priority for Bengaluru Football Club was to spread the name of the club and raise a fan base. Loyalty is held in a much higher stand when it comes to football and BFC had to cash in on the early success. Starting from scratch, Kunal talks us through the ingenious methods employed to attract fans to the club. We don't have any big name players, spare a couple of them. So it was always going to be a challenge about uh, building a fan base and competing with the likes of maybe East Bengal, Mohan Bagan and even Pune FC, who have been doing a fantastic job. Uh, but the brief was simple, to let everyone know who BFC is, to let every person in Bangalore at least know every player from BFC. So the idea was to make all these guys rock stars and we got them out as much as possible. And uh, our first game saw about 7,500 people and that's when we knew that we are getting something right here. We knew we were never going to build fans overnight. So everyone including the coach himself, uh, all the players, everyone took part in all the marketing activities. We, uh, the first two months of pre-season, we went and reached out to a lot of fans, open our training sessions. We still do. We have open training sessions for fans to come and, and watch. Uh, we have our own uh, official home pub in Arbor Brewing Company, where players go after a game, meet fans, interact with them. Uh, we have contests where you can get to win a coffee with a, fa with, with a player or, or spend time with a player. So our players have basically gone and reached out as much as possible and made it very personal with the fans. 
We've conducted clinics for schools, colleges, taken part in uh, activities with NGOs for causes and walkathons, marathons and all the sorts. So uh, the first two months, yeah, we did reach out a lot. We, were, we made sure we were everywhere and uh, that's gone a long way to help the club in what it has become today. The ticket pricing for the home games was more than affordable to the common man as well. So one stand, 50% of our stadium, we said it's 30 rupees and 50 rupees. You know, so everybody can afford that. And then we said the West Block will make it for college, for, for westernized football fans and for corporates. So that strategy, I think, really worked for us. I think the other thing that really worked for us was, uh, you know, our media manager uh, and the way Kunal Majgaonkar uh, set up our whole social media platform. We put up the uh, giant screen, which was the first in India, where you can see your highlights of the goals and the close, uh, you know, close calls or whatever. We had match day programs in every seat. We, you know, we sold jerseys on the stadium. If people couldn't afford jerseys, we sold replica T-shirts and replica caps. We made sure that the food was free in the West Block and at a nominal cost in the North Stand. We gave all the BDFA uh, clubs, whoever has registered free tickets, so that they come and they can get access to watching the team. I mean, to be honest, building a brand from within, there's only so much you can do. You can, uh, you know, get the message out there, whether it's through social media or uh, through press reports, but in the end, your brand will only build, get built if uh, you know the team performs well on the field. The fans actually respond to that performance. Fans respond to the experience that we give them on match day, and that's how you actually build a brand. Right now, we want people to come and see uh, Bangalore FC perform on the pitch, but our um, aim and vision is to not only be the biggest club in Asia, but also to actually impact Bangalore as a city and everything that goes along with it, whether it's schools, whether it's colleges, whether it's corporates, but making sure people are playing football the right way, they know Bangalore FC. So plans are enormous that way. We all know a different language. We come from a lot of different places. But one thing that brings us together is the love for Bangalore FC. After a great run, BFC were quickly brought back down to earth. Their impressive start had been halted by two away losses to East Bengal and Pune FC and draws versus Mumbai FC and Sporting Goa. They had slipped to third at the table and worrying signs had started to set in. Was this a minor stumble in BFC's pursuit for greatness or was this a sign of things to come? The first thing we did was um, uh, we got a team, the ex-India team manager, Mandar Tamhane, he's a Pune-based guy. We got him on board and he was basically the fulcrum uh, who knew everything about Indian football. So he chose our assistant coach uh, Pradyum Reddy who uh, used to be the manager of Shillong Lejong. And then we were very clear that what we wanted to do was create world class infrastructure and create a setup which can comp compete or compare to any setup globally. Uh, so Pradyum actually played a pivotal role in selecting all the Indian players because he knew all the Indian players. But what was very challenging for us was that most of the Indian players, almost all the good Indian players had already been signed up by the clubs or they had contracts with clubs because which good player wouldn't have a contract four months before the league. So we were stuck. We were, Pradyum was like, you know, all, the only players I know are the players who didn't make it or who, who were potentials, but they couldn't make it. So, Pradyum put together a bunch of, uh, you know, 12, uh, I think 12 players. And um, we were like, okay, uh, we had 12 players and we had this big launch party in June that we were doing where we were unveiling the name, the logo, and we were struggling to get 18 people to line up on the pitch to announce the team. At the back of four disappointing results, it might have been easy for the fans to turn their backs on the team, but not the BFC faithful. 
Eight weeks into the team's formation and the management's efforts to raise a fan base had finally begun taking shape. The Bangaloreans had taken to the football like fish to water and were united by the colour blue. Turning out in large numbers for home and away games, the growing contingent of BFC fans had started to mobilise and plan various events to show their support to their team. The fans have also been pretty uh, incredible out here, you know, we've had uh, initially for the first couple of games, I think, you know, two, two, three games later, we had a march from Bangalore Central to here. We've always had uh, the Westwood, uh, West Block A here is an unbelievable stand to be sitting at or sitting anywhere close to. Uh, we've all, uh, Bangalore is known for its home support and uh, I think everyone in the world would have seen RCB's home support. But uh, that's a bunch of 40, 40 to 45,000 people making so much noise. But uh, trust me, you come in here, 6,000 to 7,000 people can make 60% of that noise here. So that is the impact that we've left as fans here. And uh, in fact, we've had uh, different things. You know, we've been very interactive on Facebook and uh, the admins have been uh, keeping us posted on different things. Like, for instance, you know, what time the match starts or where do we come and collect the tickets. So it's been great for the fans as well. Probably the most intimidating atmosphere in, uh, in terms of the I-League in India because we might be a small stadium compared to your uh, East Bengals and Mohan Bagans who have a massive stadium and a support of around 35, 40,000 people. But uh, we've always come out here, 6,000, 7,000 fans going berserk every single game is a fantastic feeling and uh, there have been crazy chants as well. No, this is probably the only team that has uh, one specific chant for at least each player, uh, barring just the team. So, Every time a player gets the ball, he'd have his own name chanted in a different way. Robin Singh, in fact, had said this in one interview. You know, we've heard East Bengal chants, we've heard Mohan Bagan chants, but you know, it gives him thrills to hear his name from 6,000, 7,000 people and people cheering him on. In fact, uh, we've had posters. A uh, lot of fans have come posters for birthdays of uh, players whenever it happened during the I League season. In fact, uh, there might be a picture. You know, Osana was standing right down here, and uh, you know, we celebrated his birthday with the entire stand singing his. Uh, singing chants for him. The players themselves were overwhelmed by the support and admitted that they drew inspiration from the fans. Fans have been brilliant, you know, I've, I've, again I've played for East Bengal and playing for the BFC fans. I'd, take these 8,000 fans any day against the 90,000 that I've played against in East Bengal. Uh, whether it's the youngest kid watching the game or whether it's the, whether it's the oldest uncle watching the game, it's all one spirit, you know, they're all chanting the same thing. So that's, being a footballer, you always want to play in front of a packed stadium and when they're shouting your name, I think, personally speaking, it gives me goosebumps and I love playing in front of the BFC crowd. We may not have as many numbers as other clubs that have been around for a lot of years, but in terms of quality fans, I think we're number one. We've got the best quality fans. I don't think there's fans who chant for 90, ho 90 complete minutes at any other stadium in, in, the, in the I League. Our fans conduct marches. They land up at Arbor for away games when, when they're televised. They turn up at away games. So all this to happen in the first year is unbelievable. Fans have been an instrumental part of our season. Uh, you know, we never expected to get 8,000 fans at a game, you know, we, we, I think we're 25,000 members on Facebook now in a, in an eight, nine month period, which is, is magnificent. It's just snowboard really from the first game. I think they turned out in, in good numbers on the first game, around about 6,000. A little bit of an unknown, people coming to see, let's have a look what they're doing out there. And with the first performance being good and the atmosphere and everyone enthralling in what's going, it, it's just grown from there really and gone from strength to strength. The fans have been something of, uh, for the what they use is immense. From the get-go, um, the first game of the season, fans had to break through the gate to try and come in to watch a game. Also, you can see when we play our home games, the, the, the crowd that we get, all very loyal and all very enthusiastic fans. And, and also, the word is spreading all over the world. It was very, I was very happy when I got a call from Spain. There was a guy who, you know, who was a supporter, wanted to wish us well, me and the whole team. And which uh, is growing, you know, and it's, it's amazing to know what the social media can do to you. To your, to, your, to your stature as a club and uh, thankfully we have got people like Kunal who are tapping on it. Meanwhile, BFC continued with their efforts to eliminate the club fan gap. We still now uh, have different activities. We haven't uh, taken our foot off the pedal. We've got something called the BFC Day Out. 
is a five aside six aside tournament for for fans that we organized and uh, there were about 64 places but we saw about 750 entries for it and uh, bfc day out gives the, the fans a chance to come and, and play at the stadium and be coached by all the players so there's a personal touch always there's something happening always we have something called the ask bfc segment on twitter where we make a player available and fans can shoot questions to him so the there's there's no there's been no slowing down of of in reaching our process to fans right from day 1 you know what happened was uh, we were here to collect our passes and uh, right from day 1 we had to collect our passes right in this building right here and uh, we would see the team coming in for the gym and the team itself was open to it you know everyone came and met the fans who were there to collect the passes and stuff and uh, we managed to have an interactive session with uh, Ashley Westwood itself on day 1 for us you know for someone who's come from england uh, to start interacting with fans directly with the club not even set up yet you know it was a great uh, initiative from his side he came he had a chat with us he said that you know certain players look promising and i hope it starts well and things like that so you know it it made you know from right from the outset you know bfc as a club has made it uh, very comfortable for the fans to come in another step that the club have taken in bridging the gap between the players and fans is um, a fan had actually written to the club asking about uh, Sean Rooney's injury and instead of replying the club actually had the player call the fan personally and give him an update about the recovery so i thought i thought that was absolutely phenomenal a very personal touch between the club and the fans they've taken a lot of initiatives you know this is something that's been completely different from what we've seen yes we've seen other clubs from bangalore come but uh, nothing compared to what we've seen in terms of the professionalism and the marketing that has been done here appa jinni marzi language a bol liye पर सू सारे कट्ठी एक ही चीज रख दी बी एफ सी मीन वाइल द मोरल इन द बी एफ सी कैंप वॉज रनिंग हाई एंड इट वॉज इन सरप्राइजिंग टू सी दियर नेक्स्ट रन ऑफ रिजल्ट विद फोर वन इन रो बी एफ सी एट पिप ईस्ट बंगाल टू द टॉप ऑफ द लीग एंड राउंड द इयर ऑफ विद एन इम्प्रेसिव टू वन विक्ट्री अगेंस्ट सलगाव कर एफ सी छेत्री एट टर्न ऑन द स्टाइल वन इट मैटर्ड मोस्ट स्कोरिंग अ ब्रेस अगेंस्ट चिलोंग लजोंग एंड ट्रेनिंग चैंपियंस चर्चिल ब्रदर्स टू राउट दम इन दियर ओन बैक यार्ड Nine games to go and a three-point lead at the top. Would they have enough in the tank to hold on till the end? Mandy told me that he was very impressed uh, with Ashley, and he threw out this name that you know there's a young guy. He played for Manchester United for two seasons. Uh, he's played across the English league. He's 37, 38, very hungry to prove himself as the manager. And he would, he, he Mandy was of the view that he was someone who would really relish in the challenge. So you know, we looked at his credentials. Uh, we spoke to Ashley. Ashley gave us a phenomenal presentation. Uh, Mandy and uh, our one of our, our our technical director Kunal Agarwal flew down to London to meet Ashley, and they were extremely impressed. And then Ashley signed on. At the helm of this continued run of positive results was coach Ashley Westwood. With the club finishing the year at the top of the I League standings, fans and critics alike had begun to sit up and take notice of the gaffer. Pulling the strings behind the scenes and orchestrating the team's style of play, Ashley had been instrumental to the team's success. His beautiful style of football had been lauded by many. Yeah, I mean it's important, especially with it being a new football club. Um You know, we we, we set our stall up to be attacking and entertaining. We, we was wary that we was a new club, so we needed to get people interested in our football club, and that would come from the style of play. You know, if we was, you know, four five one, and we were negative, and it was it was a boring game to watch with us being new. You know, we might not have got the support that we required. So we, we set our stall up early doors. We got a style of play that that I believe in. Um, you know, modelled on a few English clubs myself, um, and and just just entertaining to watch. And you know, it's no coincidence now we're the top scorers in the league. and you know we we're, we're finding ourselves doing well in the league but that all comes from you know our system and our style of play uh, obviously the coach comes with a very attacking mentality he hates when the ball is played back there's so much of intensity in training it's unlike something i've seen anywhere and uh, it isn't surprising to see the kind of results we're reaping because of the kind of football we play uh, people who flock the stadium have not come here for the match day experience only or not just because the stadium's painted fresh and we've got Sunil Chhetri and a few other stars on our team but they've kept coming back because of the way we play football and we even on our social networking forums we've had fans from other clubs comment and lord the kind of style of play that BFC has 
Besford is a great tactician. Uh, you know, in the initial part of the season, we saw a lot of crosses. Uh, but as the season progressed, uh, this transformed into a lot of passing and a lot of movement. Uh, so Westwood really adapts uh, the, the team's style of play as per the opposition and that's what makes uh, a hell lot of a difference. Uh, something that really differentiates BFC as a football club is that they have this tactical sense which you won't see in many other I-League clubs for example. If you see them, the way they pass the ball, they move it around and they actually end up playing football is, I may be going over the top here but it's very similar to Arsenal and Barcelona and European football. And this is something that has actually been brought in by Westwood. He's been instrumental in this change. They have combined a lot of style with substance. You know, another point that, that one of my friends, uh, Sarver, never fails to mention uh, is the mixture of experience and youth in the, in the squad. You know, on, on one hand, we have the 19-year-old Sham Mangal, uh, who has just been introduced to Indian football. And on the other hand, uh, we have the 34-year-old John Manyonga, uh, who, well, let's put it this way, has uh, seen the world. Um, you know, along with them, we have, we have star players like Sunil Chetri and high-profile players like John Johnson and Curtis Osano, uh, fitting so well into the system. I think a lot of credit uh, needs to be given to Ashley Westwood and uh, Pradeem Reddy. Let's take a minute and watch this wonderful range of passing I had the pleasure to witness during a training session at the stadium. Ashley may have won the critics and fans, but the most important part of the job was to win over the players. I was absolutely awestruck to see the respect and admiration the players had for the gaffer. Ashley Westwood, you know, he's a lion on and off the field. Uh, when there's one leader, you do really well and no matter what happens, we believe in him. So, I don't know, I would give everything for him. If I'm here always, I'll give everything for him. Uh, well, of course, Ashley Westwood, yeah, I played with him back home, he was a good player, you know, he's had a, a big influence on me and on my career and as a person, you know, he's, he's a great guy on and off the field, he's, uh, he's helped me, he's obviously brought me here, he's, he's introduced me to uh, a different country, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that. I think if there's, if, if, if I could point out one reason why we're here, if it, if, then it would have been, it has to be Ashley Westwood. I think uh, apart from his technical qualities, technical knowledge, tactical abilities, I think he's a, he's, a, he's a great leader, not only on the field, off the field also, he always talks to the players, motivates them, it doesn't matter if it's a first term player or a, you know, a player on the bench, a junior one or senior one, for him everybody is same and uh, the work ethic that he has brought from, what he has learned for so many years has been tremendous, you know, every day we are at, at it and every day we want to work hard because of him. Actually, he's coach, he's a, he's a very good friend of mine as well, at the same time he's still your boss at the end of the day. So it's all three mixed into one. He's a guy you could approach about anything, any problems you have, personal, money related, anything at all. Guy you can speak to all the time. He's a great man manager, he's tactically very good. So yeah, he's, he's done well with, with the team we have and he's improved every, every individual player. You know, Even the players that haven't took as big part this year, they all feel the feel they've took something out of the season. You know, Every player's improved like physically, um, tactically, mentally, technically. So. Even the players, like, he's, been, he's been a great influence on me, personally. Um, Westwood is an absolutely no-nonsense coach. In fact, he left out Sunil Shetri for the first home game. And Sunil Shetri is obviously the star player and the most expensive signing. Um, all of the owners were present in full strength and when the team list was announced, it didn't have their star player in it. So, it just goes to show that Westwood is an absolutely no-nonsense manager. Everybody is very keen, everybody wants to improve. And everybody wants to be in a sync, which is very important. Whatever the gaffer wants, all the all the other staff and the players are in the, in the same sync. So we know we are working towards one single motive, which always works. So we only have one Don in our team, and we all follow whatever he wants. The former Manchester United trainee had also brought in a wealth of knowledge from Europe and had started to implement new fitness, nutrition, and training regimes previously unseen in Indian football. He and his team were on a mission to change Indian football forever. Yeah, fitness-wise, what we've brought in is, is just methods that we that we use in, in the English Premier League or in the English Championship. Um, just a, a base fitness, what the lads need to to be able to be professional footballers, conditioning work, be it gym work, nutrition work, being protein shakes or, or food, breakfast, lunch, dinners, um, and then just a, an underlining tempo of what's required in, in a football session in, in training. Just just training in specific heart rate zones. You know, we've brought the heart rate monitors in so we can monitor each other's 
uh, training methods and techniques to make sure we're getting maximum opportunity to improve the players and, and gear them up to, to, to a Premier League football standard, if you like. But it's like you say, it's brought over here. It's like educating the players here, the younger players, even the older players, about nutrition, how to look after your body. You know, don't go out on a weekend if you have a game on Tuesday. Simple things like that, like just professionalism is the main thing you brought over. Just a standard you set yourself since pre-season we came in, you told us what we wanted, how to be in, on, a, on a schedule. And since the boys are working hard, I said, oh, I'm really tired, I can't really cope with the training first, after the first week. Three weeks later, it's the fittest I've ever been in entire lives. So it just goes to show it works. So simple things to educate them how to do nutrition is the main thing. I think it's changed a lot. Some of the boys came in, don't know what shape they were in, like body-wise, but now the pictures you see, it's like got two different people. Well, you know, being at East Bengal, I never thought that nutrition and all this was very important, but being here and Ashley West for bringing all of this in, you know, whether it's the facilities, the fitness techniques, or even the diet for that matter. From, let's say, the ball boy to himself, Ashley Westwood, it's, it's all a compact and a team effort, and it's, it's brilliant. I've never faced or been in a club which has all these kind of facilities, and I'm happy and I'm fit. It's been a very professionally approached club, you know. I think there's proper training methods to it. Uh, that's something that I don't think anyone would have seen in this country. You know, a lot of players have accepted that. You know, the type of training methods that have been used in their training sessions and the type of fitness regimes that they go through is completely different from what they've seen at the other club. Yeah, I mean, we've got a, a full structure at the football club. Um, you know, be it a team manager who will, who will be involved in, in liaising with hotels and, and booking flights and, and kit uh, and making sure the lads are punctual on, on time in and around the apartments. Then we go to like the medical staff, we have um, two physiotherapists, we have two fitness coaches, one that I brought over from England, a fellow called Mal Purchase who is working at Wolverhampton Wanderers. We then brought in a, a goalkeeping coach, which is uh, Ali that was working at Preston North End before he came over to here. We've obviously got the assistant coach, which is Prajan Reddy, which gives us our knowledge of Indian football. And then we've brought in uh, an analysis team, well, an analysis fella who, who does all the video analysis work with myself. Uh, making sure that we can prepare the lads for what's gonna, what they're going to face, be it opposition-wise. When I was in Kansas or in sporting, a lot of things that I used to see which wasn't there in my country, I'm not demeaning any club, but that, that was a scene now. When we train every day, you know, right from the P test we have in the morning, which you feel you won't be allowed to train, the heart rate monitors, you know, the, the, the nutrition that we get, the food that we get, the compulsory lunch and breakfast at the club. You know, everything, you know, right after the game, the ice bath and everything that happens in any decent club in, in, in the world happens in BFC. Oh, Ashley Westwood and Pradyam Reddy, they've been a revelation. To actually have the foresight to choose their team, trust them and then employ training regimes unseen in India, they've been incredible. This is probably the only team in India that has three meals together, lives in the same complex and travels every day to training in the same team bus. Much of that credit has to be given to the Gaffer Westwood. Just because nobody in our club is happy with the normal stuff, everybody wants to improve, everybody wants to learn right from, as I said, from a Gaffer to the whole, to the whole team it translates. He's just mad, he's just passionate, he just wants to improve, he just wants to get the best out of us. And uh, thankfully all the players are in sync with him. That's one of the most important things that we're doing well. Touch wood. We may be from different nationalities, we may speak different languages, but there's one thing that connects all of us. Bengaluru FC. A series of indifferent results had allowed the likes of Sporting Goa and East Bengal to close in on Westwood's Blue Army. BFC registered convincing victories over Choshal Brothers and United FC to stretch their lead to 7 points, but was somewhat pegged back by losses versus Shillong Lajong and Rang Dajid. The win against Churchill Brothers saw this stunning solo goal by Robin Singh. Power, pace and finesse. Topped by an even better celebration. Five games to go and with a slender lead at the top, PFC had reached that point in the season where a momentary lapse in concentration could undo all the hard work they had put in. When Ashley came on board, things got a little easier because he brought in the foreign players. He brought in the four foreign players uh, and he got some of the players he knew were very good. And then once we had all this lined up, at the same time Sunil, Sunil Chetri uh, was looking to come back to India. Uh, he, he, you know, he was finishing his stint at Sporting Lisbon and he was looking to enter a club in India. He was in talks with Churchill, he was in talks with the big Calcutta clubs. 
but sunil also was of the view that he wants to be part of something new something different he had seen everything in indian football he's the captain of india and he wanted something new so he met uh, mustafa met kunal met mandy and we told him what our vision was and our vision was to be the most the best run club in the country the most professional organization where a huge focus is on youth development so sunil loved the idea he loved the thought uh, we showed him what we were trying to do in bangalore uh, what we were planning on doing with the stadium the you know the, the way we were going to monitor everything and uh, he agreed and that very very uh, i mean for sunil chetri to agree to come to a completely new club was just uh, something exceptional you know i talked a lot about sunil actually as, as to how he thinks as a person so once sunil came on board robin came on board robin singh uh, his strike partner and then we had a team which was quite good like on paper we were like okay this this is potentially a good team in an off field development bengaluru fc had done what no other indian club had done before they had opened a youth soccer school they were truly setting out to be different by promoting football on a national scale i was intrigued by the importance bfc were giving to developing youth products and spoke to richard hood the head of youth development at bfc the setup has currently got a under 17 team under 9 team under 11 under 13s under 15s and under 17s we haven't really gone in all out on creating under 19 squad because we want to develop these players over a period of time creating one right now would have meant we kept them only for a year and then let them go so the vision right now is to get in the best youngsters between the age of 15 and 16 develop them in the next 4 5 years and then the remaining will follow through as a consequence of being part of the program uh, overall the program has been created to give bangalore players a chance to be a part of bangalore fc since the club has been named after the city it's a matter of pride and ownership that the kids take so they have something to aim towards in representing them marching out at the stadium and to the songs and to the crowds and thing that we created so far so the youth setup has pretty much been created to feed the senior team soccer school started off uh, this month that is uh, april 2014 so it's uh, more of a commercial setup where we get the best i mean get the best players pretty much who haven't been part of the youth setup as such to come into the picture in terms of paying and playing for the soccer schools so soccer schools will give them a chance to develop under the bfc umbrella we'll be watching them every week we've got match day sorted out a structured training program for them to be a part of so over two or three years if at the under 11 age group if they aren't part of the elite youth setup there's the best players in bangalore they have two years to progress towards it and something for them to work towards our objective is to help indian football grow our objective is to tap the grassroots levels and actually make an impact so that india slowly slowly grows as a footballing nation that's our objective and we are using the club as an avenue to do that to achieve that well you know everybody keeps talking every year that soccer schools are important starting from the grassroots level is important but well all i can say to that is everybody just been talking and bfc has just been doing whether it's the i league table or the soccer schools they've done and soccer schools was just a surprise for all of us because we are, we honestly thought it's just going to be 19s 21s in the senior team but bringing in the bfc soccer schools it's a brilliant idea because as you say you know grassroots levels is where you start from and bfc is doing a good job with it the inception came through from the management the management was quite keen that uh, we have a commercial part of the youth dev commercial wing of the youth development program as well because uh, not, we had to turn away a lot of players in the lower age groups telling them that you might not be good enough and thing, but they don't have anywhere else to go to in terms of developing themselves so youth soccer schools gives them a chance to probably come into set up trained by the bfc coaches and then uh, come through the main elite setup of the youth development program so the entire concept that drives us is that uh, we need to send the brand out so the kids can associate with it so apart from watching the senior team play in the i league every week we have a we give them a chance to wear the bfc colors train with the bfc coaches and come through for us so when our brand started getting developed people started knowing bfc people started knowing that there's this football club in bangalore that exists you know then what we realized was that we thought there would be a great time for us to capitalize on the brand name to launch a soccer schools program uh where we would help the youth in india we think it's a new thing and it's wonderful and 
thank thank God Bangladesh Bangladesh is doing it and they're doing it wonderfully. But just a common, it's it's, it's very common layman language, layman knowledge. You know, when if you are a club and you know you're going to buy players from from other clubs or other places of the country, and if you have the home ground players, you don't have to spend a lot of money. So, from a business point of view, it's a very smart move. You know, if you have under 16, under 12, under 15, under 19 in your own backyard, number one, you don't have to buy players. Number two, you don't have to like if you buy a player and bring him, you can't. and grill the 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 club uh, the club's passion and him just like that uh, it's a it's a slow process it's not it's going to happen as quick as the first team you know we got a really good youth team and coaching involved richard hood who's experienced in indian football has come from the the tfa academy uh, so he he's come in uh, and and put the foundations down we try and link everything in into the first team so there's a a clear goal for the youth team if you're doing well on the youth team you know one day hopefully you get pushed up into the first team and you get the opportunity And then we just go right the way down to seven year, seven years of age. Uh, you know, we're trying to embrace the the boom of football in the country, if you like. There's, there's lots of bodies, there's lots of talent here, and hopefully we can nurture some of them into the team and and ultimately the national side. So we're trying to as do as much as we can. Although at the minute it's it's slow, it's a working process, but you know we'll get there in the end. And as the stadium, you know, uh, increases with our infrastructure, as the training pitches become more available, it'll grow at an even faster rate. But everything's being done. At a steady rate, and everything's being done well at the minute. I think it's a great thing that Bangladesh is doing, it and I know as a fact that when they have Saturday, they're going to do it properly, which is a, a very good thing for Bangalore, and hopefully a lot of other clubs can follow it. Expansion calls for better infrastructure, and BFC were leaving no stone unturned in making their mark. As you know, India has won the bid for the 2017 Under 17 FIFA World Cup. That's going to be held in India. so as as a part of um, one of the conditions to getting an i league team was that the new i league team owners would have to rebuild infrastructure and upgrade the infrastructure existing infrastructure and if you you know if you've been to bangalore football stadium you know that you know half the stadium is you cannot even sit on half the stadium because it's structurally unstable the other half is not nothing great um, so we want to improve the infrastructure we want to rebuild that entire stadium um and our our aim is to build a 30000 uh, capacity stadium and along with the stadium uh, you know we have plans of uh, developing almost like a sports city like if you've been to wembley you have shopping malls you have hotels you have uh, you know stuff like that to create an atmosphere which is, which would make uh, which would you know want someone we want people to want to come back for to watch football So that's the plan it's a 30000 uh, seat stadium along with all the amenities that uh, you know a global football stadium should have and we would like our stadium to be remembered and to be known as one of the best stadiums in India and also one of the best stadiums in Asia so that's the, that's the hope While BFC were hitting their targets off field the players were trying to do the same on field there was a real bond developing between the players There was good-hearted banter during the training sessions, and the camaraderie was there for all to see. The one big family feeling had started to set in. It was so easy to forget that this club was in its first year of inception. But it was around this time that the BFC family were dealt a setback. Malcolm Purchase, BFC's fitness trainer, had been diagnosed with cancer and had gone back to the UK for further treatment. Malcolm Purchase has been BFC's fitness trainer since the start of the year. Uh, of course, he's done an incredible job uh, since joining, but he's been an absolute legend uh, in the eyes of his fans. Uh, many of many of the people don't know, but Malcolm was detected with cancer soon after joining uh, BFC, and he went back to Cardiff for treatment. uh but you know such was his will uh that 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 he continued to prepare the training charts for the team from his hospital bed uh in the UK uh you know his doctors even advised him to to not come back to India but he came back for the last few crucial games of the season it was it was a great uh, thing for us to have someone like him 
um, in the last question I said, you know, things, certain small changes have improved the fitness and he's had a major role to play in it, not just the training part of it, but your nutrition as well plays a huge role in it. Uh, so, and for someone like him to be in the hospital bed and draw charts, you know, when, when we guys heard that stories and when we were discussing it in the stand, when the owners were there, I sit in the platinum stand, that's where the owners as well sit. So, they were just discussing this on and off uh, with certain random fans, you know. The way that he came about and, you know, gave out interviews and said that, you know what, whether I'm there or not, the team should still do well. And then the first instance that he, the first chance that he got to get out of the hospital, he came, he interacted with the team and uh, it's something like, you know, that, that, that shows that, uh, you know, it's been a family more than a football club and it, it mocks uh, emotions from everyone. In fact, I even read in an article that uh, Westwood would use Malcolm's example in his team talks, uh, you know, to, to inspire and, and motivate the team. Uh, you know, the man is truly an embodiment of passion for the club uh, and whatever said about him would be less. This entire club was brought up as a family, so when, it's, when something is not right with your family, right, you try and motivate yourself to push yourself to that next, ex uh, next level and that's exactly what happened in uh, this case as well. So it, it was a very negative thing to happen to us, but it was used in a positive way, which is fantastic. Back to business now, down to the last few games of the season, and BFC's run-in featured an all-important clash versus Pune FC. It was also the last home game in Bengaluru season, and the stadium witnessed a record turnout. The match ended in a 1-1 stalemate, following which the players held up a banner to show their acknowledgement to the support shown by the BFC fans throughout the season. Still holding a crucial 3-point lead at the top, BFC had to win 2 out of their 3 remaining games to ensure an unlikely league triumph. They next played Kolkata's Mohan Bagan and the game saw this absolute rocket of a strike from Sean Rooney. Rooney's goal put Bengaluru well on their way to beating the hosts 2-0 before travelling to Goa to face Dempo at the Fatorda Stadium. A victory against Dempo and Bengaluru Football Club would be crowned as the champions of India. I seated myself at Arbor, BFC's home pub, to watch the Dempo vs Bengaluru FC game. And at that point, little did I know that an extraordinary story was about to unfold before me and the BFC faithful. This is what followed.
As you'd imagine, celebrations continued long into the night. And it was an early start the next day as well. The fans had mobilized and made plans to receive the players at the airport. Banners and posters were made using spray paint and the fans donned the jerseys of their beloved club. Two buses loaded with fans made their way to the airport. The scenes at the airport was unlike anything I had ever seen before. The fans thronged the airport and the players were deservingly given a hero's welcome. The, the, the vision of the club was to set up this three to five year project, um, be it the, the renovation of the football stadium, be it grassroots level, be it youth team level. It was about coming in and setting foundations and something that was sustainable. You know, under no circumstances was I told to go and win the league. You know, I wasn't even told to finish in the top half. We've got this three year exemption from relegation. You know, we weren't too concerned if we finished in the bottom three. Obviously, we wanted to finish outside of the bottom three. So that, that box has been ticked already, but now it's about making sure we've got a, a viable, viable product to carry forward and, and be something that all of India can hopefully look at and, and take a leaf out of our book, if you like. What I think Bangalore makes different is maybe the professionalism we've brought to the club, you know, on and off the field. It, a lot of the, a lot, I haven't played for any other Indian club, but a lot of the players say this is the most professional run club they've been at. Probably say like if you watch games or anything we've done in training, if you watch, it's probably the hardest working team in the league by far, by long shot. Since day one, we came in with set the standards of run till your legs give up, and then someone else comes on, they'll run till the legs give up. And um, the best thing about this team is like there's no egos at all. So for Bangalore to be where they are now, it's simple to hard work and professionalism brought into it. When I was talking to Sunil um, about how the season has gone with. Uh, BFC. So he said, you know, part we won the I League, it's a dream. Uh, we filled stadiums, it's a dream. But more than anything else, part one thing that I really want to tell you is that the facilities that you guys have created and the level of care that you guys have taken over players is what is equal to what I had at Sporting Lisbon, is equal to what I had at Kansas City, is equal to anything I've seen. And Sunil said the main difference was that when I was at Churchill, after a football game, they wouldn't care what we did. He said, here, every single meal is monitored. Every single day, our heart rates are monitored. Our fat percentage is monitored. Our beep test is taken. And he said, part at the end of the day, that's what has really differentiated us. Bengaluru Football Club were given a guard of honour in the last game against Sporting Goa. They ended the season on a winning note after beating the hosts 2-1 courtesy of a 90th minute header by Beko. BFC's journey to the pinnacle of the I-League was an unbelievable one. This apparent group of discards had proved everybody wrong to go on and win India's biggest football prize. Unrelenting spirit and hard training proved to be the making of the champs led by one of India's footballing greats, Sunil Chetri. There were no expectations and therefore no surprises, but that didn't make the win any less worthy. Bengaluru had conquered India and now they had set their sights on Asian ascendancy. 2014 had proved to be the year of the rookie and the one big family were champions on debut. One would have thought a reception at the airport and a guard of honour at the Fatorda Stadium would have sealed the celebrations. But hang on a minute. Soon after, BFC announced an open-top bus victory parade. And yes, you guessed it. This was the first open-top bus parade for a football team in India. I think the victory parade was something which was uh, huge. So this is an out-and-out -out European thing, you know, where people take a bus and you go on it and 
was something that we were all craving for you know i came down a little late maybe but but to see that happen in india and to see the effect of that and to see people in the two big roads of this country you know mg road and brigade road talk about in the city rather talk about it with uh, with a great sense of respect you know is something huge main thing is we've got the right people behind the right jobs we've approached the game from a very professional background saying we we're not in it just to run a club we run it to run it professionally whether it's managerially whether it's on the field uh, whether it's our marketing initiatives the quality that we aspire to uh, if you see any of our events you know there's a very high standard that we always maintain with in every form of execution i think it's a great exhibition for football i think this club is be a great example of how things should be run in this country even if half the things that are followed in this club are followed by the all india football federation i think our country will go different places a lot of these players who you know in times of india called discards and all these things and you know a lot of people say that you know nobody wanted them etc they have improved so much and you know when we won the league we had an awards night and these guys couldn't believe it they were crying they were like you know we won the i league you know we nobody wanted us not even a second string team wanted us and now we are here we won the i league so it just shows that right approach this country has endless amounts of potential there's no point in time when we say oh we're satisfied with what we've done so even if it's on pitch even if we are number 1 for most of the season on the table or even if we are doing things correctly off the pitch uh the the dictate is simple to always raise the bar so i think what bangalore fc has done is you know realized what fans needed um, both on and off the pitch and we delivered next year is obviously going to be bigger obviously going to be better in the terms of things off the field in the terms of the way you see things on the field so basically the sky is the limit yeah. story over here there was there was this guy who played for 10 years and he wanted to see god so finally after 10 years god appeared and the guy is like uh, god is like ask what you want and the guy is like i want three wishes and god is like all right go on the guy said i want all the money all the luxuries in the world god said i'm in you're going to get it fine next one he said i want to own a club the best club in the world with a lot of money winning championships and everything God is like all right can't it go on you get one third he said i want the best fans in the world and god is like boy listen to me listen to me and god is like boy you go on 10 years more and 10 years more and 10 years more you ain't gonna get it because i've already given it to bangalore fc I don't think there's anything else that can describe this better. This feeling, having all of you here, the bus parade, having all these players here. Nobody ever imagined that this could be possible. I think a huge round of applause for our team who have made all of this possible and each and every one of you. Obviously it goes without saying that the players have had a wonderful part to play in this, but I can't even begin to tell you what each and every one of these people have gone through to be standing here today. So I think for them, for the team, for you guys, for Bangalore, let's give it up for BFC. These scenes of joy were the result of 8 months of hard work by the owners, players and staff alike. These group of players turned away by other clubs had now firmly established their place in folklore they say that where there's a will there's a way the players had proved that and the owners more so by taking on the initiative of changing indian football forever from opening youth soccer schools to building infrastructure and introducing new fitness and training regimes in the country bengaluru fc had done it all They had stuck to their promise of being the most professionally run club in India and topped it off by becoming the first ever Indian team to win the league in their debut season. 
And this was just the beginning.